this is where it gets really fun because I don't want to be put into a box. I don't want to be put into an algorithm when it comes to healing. And the mantra three from our previous conversation was all that an important aspect of healing is on the spiritual level. And I'm going to kind of wrap a few more mantras all in that because we were talking about how the ego is there to protect us. And what the ego is doing is it's sort of part of our mask that we wear to fit in to society. But a lot of times we you know, we have to feel in order to heal and that these distractions, these masks that we put in or that we put on in order to survive, they get in the way. That's where plant medicines come in is you know, they create this neuroplasticity and help you to get unstuck. So Dr. Diva, I just wove together sort of mantra three, four, five, and six, uh-huh. kind of bring together the story of how we can get out of that box, how we can get out of that algorithm and to fully heal, you know, to take off the mask, to get unstuck. But you're the expert here. So I'm, I'm so you're gonna, yeah. let's, I think we need to define what spirituality is first. A lot of people, when they think of spiritual spirituality, they think of religion or some indoctrination. And it's not necessarily that spirituality can include religion, but the two aren't mutually exclusive. So to me, it's essentially spirituality is what's your soul's purpose? Are you actually following your dharma? Now, that to me is is a component of spirituality, but the bigger component of spirituality, which you can get from reading books, studying religion, or you can experience it yourself. And people can have these experiences through meditations, you know, different types of other awakening experiences, so to speak. But for me, plant medicine was the one that really reawakened my spiritual being. And the reason being is because spirituality opened up me in a way where I now function my life to serve others. And that's one component of spirituality. Another component is that we understand that we're all connected. You know, so all life on this planet, we're all connected. We're all the same living, breathing organism. If you combine all of us together and we're all pieces of a whole, trees, animals, humans. And Once you understand that concept of the oneness, then that takes on a different meaning. And so we understand that our thoughts can impact any living organism. And there's been studies shown that, you know, and I can't remember the specific study, but there were examples of droplets of water and thoughts that was targeted towards these like glasses of water. And these inside glasses of water, it was actually drops of these water and and they looked at it under a microscope. And what had happened was the thoughts that were actually magnified onto these magnified and in in where the thoughts were bad thoughts. And if they were imparted on these specific glass containers and they actually analyzed the water, it, it was actually like you looked at it and it looked like the water had died. The cellular structure was clumped. In, you know, it almost took like a shape of an inflammatory cell. And then if you actually imparted, you know, pleasantries and, and good affirmations the water, it was like this beautiful crystalline structure under the microscope. So it really tells us that we're all connected in that way. Our thoughts impact other people. You know, what we say obviously impacts other people and other living things. So this is part of the concept of oneness and connectivity. And once you understand that and you realize that you kind of take on this new personality in the sense as, well, if my thoughts, which are typically negative, in my mind, and I'm just giving you an example, which for me, it was very negative before plant medicines. And I was always ruminating and I was always you know, talking to myself in a very poor, condescending way. It was just out of habit. And so you have that type of person. And so imagine that energy when it's around other people, it's going to you know, change that vibrational frequency such that it can lower other people's frequency just by the thought processes. There was um, a study that was shown, gosh, I can't remember these studies for some reason, but your thoughts can impact even the neighbors that are in the houses next to you. And there was a study that demonstrated the positivity effect of your thought process. Just by having positivity thought in your mind on a regular basis, it was able to affect the positivity affect of the neighbor next door somewhere up to like 60%, so much so that it actually had a spillover to the neighbor that was next to that neighbor. And that positivity outcome was like 21 or 30%. So that's how impactful our thought processes have on an individual. And it doesn't have to be on an individual that's right in front of us. 
So that's just the power of our thoughts. So with all this in mind, it's just really important to have a mindset where we're thinking positively, where we're engaging in positive behaviors and also nourishing and picking up other people. Those are the types of things that I define under spirituality. Looking at the other mantras that we're discussing, you know, so one of the things about plant medicine is about surrendering. And so a lot of times when we're unable to surrender, it's because our ego is in the way. And one of the things about this whole oneness aspect that I was just describing is that you literally have to let go of your ego. The ego is our identity, it's who we are, it's how we connect ourselves. That's the I, you know, and that's all egoic based. And when we are thinking about the oneness, we surrender our ego because then we become part of the whole. And so when we become part of the whole, there is no ego anymore. We've lost our identity. The ego can be good. It can be a very good thing because it's here to protect us when there's an experience that's going on in our life that reminds us of a hurt that we may have experienced years prior. It'll protect us and maybe not allow us to experience that. So plant medicines... Initially, what happens with specific medicines, it turns off the part in our minds called the default mode network, which houses this ego, which houses the critical, the mind that is kind of always on and talking and talking and talking. That's the default mode network. And it's beautiful when the plant medicines work because it almost resets the brain. And so that chatterbox kind of like dwindles down and doesn't, and sometimes it doesn't even exist for days after the, the plant medicine experience. And then it also allows you to be present in the moment. And that's one of the beautiful things about being spiritual. We're more on a level where we're living in the moment and we don't have our mind stuck in the past or having regrets of the past or having anxieties or anticipations of the future to really be... And that's where a lot of, to me, anxieties occur and mental health issues occur because we're always stuck in the past or we're always worrying about the future. If we're concentrating on the now, there's no emotions in the now. It's all just present tense type of reality, which makes life so much easier if we're able to just live in the moment more. There was a a book that I recently read. um, It's called Loving Kindness. And there's a quote in there that says that the biggest gift that you can give to an individual is your presence. You can tell when someone's present with you or not because they are just so engaged in your conversation and into your aura. Most people aren't that way because they're just distracted by all the millions of things that's going on in their mind and in their lifetime. So a lot of times meditation and breath work and theogenic experiences can lead us to a spirituality where we can be more present and we can live moment to moment. That's to me is what spirituality in, in essence really is. Mm, well, it's what you said about being present. It's so beautiful. I mean, you can even tell when you're really present with somebody. It's easier in person, but like your breathing starts to match. Think, like yep. your body movements start to mimic each other and mirror each other. And you just start to feel that. I mean, I'm really sensitive too. So like if I'm around somebody who's really anxious or amped up, like, I'm like you feel whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Right it's a helpful tool for people that are sensitive because then they can kind of tap into that and they can say, oh, that's what it is. That's anxiety or whatever it is. And then they can be more present for that person if you're picking up something that's not yours. So this whole process, it's amazing, Diva, because knowing you, like it's so hard for me to imagine that you have that inner voice, although so many of us have it, that little inner voice that's just constantly talking about negative things and is constantly going back and analyzing, oh, you could have done this better or, you know, you're not ready for something in the future, you know, past, future, past, future. And then you're talking about your plant medicine experiences. And in your book, you talk about your first experiences having MDMA and then psilocybin. I kind of wanted to talk about how, you know, there's the spirituality, there's getting more...